Hi everyone, we're here with Rock 3, also known as Rachmaninoff's third piano concerto. Yeah, we call this Rock 3 in Canada and in USA as well, I believe. So, okay, we're going to start going through this piece very, uh, very gradually and patiently. And today, uh, we're going to go straight from, you know, the third page. We're going to go straight there and we're going to look at this, this part later when it comes back at the end of the first movement. So, Rachmaninoff in this, these two pages here, is writing much more like Scarlatti in a way than your typical Russian music, which we'll have plenty of in this, con uh, in this concerto, right? <laughs> we have a lot of that. Um... We have tons of that Russian stuff in here. So, but these first two pages, while the orchestra has... We have to, you have to approach it from a more classical perspective. The, right? Okay, so that means that we're making small little shapes. And we're not using too much pedal as, as well, right? So, almost no pedal here at all. Now, uh, go to the second and fourth beat. And so you do them. Another interesting thing you could listen to is going a little beyond that. Okay, so we have. Listen to right because we don't want that to be we don't want that right we we do want more on the second and fourth beat we want to shape towards that that's the center of these little shapes you get but we don't want to we're on an accent or anything there neither really a staccato I guess right. And this toy, yep, that's announcing like the, the beginning of this the orchestra that's coming in. Okay, so So, of course, as you might uh, have guessed here, some notes are more important than others, right? So, see, there's a couple of notes amidst these sixteenths. bringing out the B flat and the B natural, especially the B natural. More dry. Now we get that pedal. And then a shape here. Right? So you have to, you know, ride the notes, ride the melodic line like you're like you're surfing on a wave. So we have that effect, right? Two little waves here. This one and this one. 
these notes yet alone. We should probably hear those, stick them out a little bit. Here, uh, five, one, two. I like that in the left hand. I don't want to look up fingerings too much here, but uh, if you're playing this piece, hopefully you're you're able to figure that out. So. Um, That's kind of a another way of playing this. Instead of doing you accentuate the other note, the the eighth note coming before the long note. So you have that effect. Okay, now another thing that we are going to look at quite a bit in this concerto is the different things that we can arrange and change around which don't look the way Rachmaninoff wrote them. And I would like to, for the most part, always consider playing it the way he wrote it, if your hands are big enough and you can do it. Uh, but there's a few places that, yes, indeed, I have just totally capitulated and... That one's fine, right? But this one here... Rachmaninoff writes... So you can switch those around. I do in this case, okay? We're definitely going to talk about this when we get to the cadenza. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to do that cadenza as well, because it's the one I know better. But... Um, there's different ways of doing that. You can do it the way he wrote it, or we try to uh, find another way of doing it. I personally really like doing the grand majority of, th of these things the way Sergei Rachmaninoff wrote them himself. He was a pianist, was an amazing pianist, seemed to know what he was doing. But we always have that option, okay? So this is one of the places, one of the exceptions, I would say. It's a lot easier to do that again. So here we have you. See all these little shapes? Again, Scarlatti style or Haydn style, classical almost. Circle of fifths. All right, let's slow this down a little bit because a little hectic, yeah? So yeah, that circle of fifths, you know, let it go, kind of die down. That's another almost horn-like or, or trumpet-like, uh, or I'm not sure, brass-like, let's just say, uh, announcement of something, uh, a new change to come. Okay, so here's another one of these parts where I'm gonna go with the arrangement style. Maybe it's not true that uh, most of the time I do it the way he wrote it. Um, but we're going to get in that in the next video, okay? We're going to get that in the next video. Let's we'll just keep this one on these uh, two first pages, yeah? This uh, thing really complexifies. Um, so, all right, that's it. We're going to keep these videos uh, uh, relatively short in that case. So I think we've covered it here for these uh, two pages. So you have that swell. You do. Bring out the left hand here. Some notes are more important than others. It sounds very good with a little pedal. Very important that bass. Here. 
that little build up there. Da, 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 da. You want more on this note, so you crescendo with these da, 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 to bring it. And then again, and another one. This one a little a little softer and a little dry, right? And then of course bring out the shapes like I just didn't. A little bit more here and a little bit of pedal. Uh, the other thing you might notice in this, uh, these two pages here, um, it's, it's a heck of a lot easier to play it fast than slow. When you go slowly, it's a necessary evil. But it's way easier to do. flows more right well of course we don't want to get too crazy with the tempo in these two pages because we're gonna go even faster afterwards I'm a big fan of um, I guess you could say well I really appreciate Rachmaninoff's tempos if you listen to the recording that of him playing this himself you know uh, but he, he is a little on the fast side maybe even by his own standards he would be a little fast it's hard to say but Rachmaninoff was someone who had a, uh, you know, he, he was rather uh, insecure. Uh, he, he didn't think that people would really enjoy his music. He was always worried that they would find it boring, you know. So when he would play things, he'd cut out sections often. He didn't want to repeat sections. In fact, at the end of this concerto, he cuts out the, uh, you know, that beautiful theme in the third movement. <laughs> He cuts it out the second time, and uh, he just didn't think people would want to hear that again, you know, that really beautiful theme. So he's a little bit like that, and perhaps that's why he's playing his music at an unbelievably fast tempo. Maybe you know, he felt like that was necessary. So, but anyway, I really love that, you know, he, he does write Allegro, ma non tanto. So Allegro, but not too fast. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this is supposed to be one tempo. And then here you is supposed to be a little bit faster, right? And then after this thing is even faster now. So all this you have to gauge. It's really convincing if you can get these three different tempos. But of course, this page, which we're going to look at in the next video, is going to be the hardest. Yeah, we have these. stuff going on there that's not easy so you have to gauge that and it is satisfying if we can get uh, the tempo in the beginning of the piece uh, something that's not too slow yeah it's not very interesting when it's so I find maybe that's personal so there we have it yeah there we have it uh, we're done with that so that's that's our first little video on rock three there's gonna be a lot of them uh, stay tuned for the next one uh, coming up coming right up